Hey guys, and welcome back. Let's go ahead and resolve this issue with core DNS not starting up in our cluster here. And we are going to do that by, of course, installing our CNI. And so we're going to head over to the documentation here. And if you take a look at the documentation, somewhere right in here, it does tell you that core DNS will not start. Let me just do a quick search for core DNS here. There's a lot of text in this documentation. And sure enough, under installing a pod network add-on, installing a CNI, a container network interface, it says that cluster DNS, core DNS, will not start up before a network is installed. So we need to install a container network interface in order for core DNS to spin up. Now there's a bunch of different supported container network interfaces out there. However, there is one in particular that I like that I've tested out that works well, which is called Project Calico. So if you just head out and search for Project Calico, this is an open source project from a company called Tigera. And Project Calico provides your container network interface as well as network policy capabilities as well. So this is a really cool open source project that is available out on GitHub. So I am going to go ahead and go back and just add on GitHub to our search here. And once we get over to GitHub here, this should take us over to the project page here. And then we are going to look for how to get started running at Calico. So they've got a link to a quick start guide on their documentation that kind of describes how to get Calico up and running on your Kubernetes cluster. And they've got a few different options. So if you're using a managed public cloud offering like EKS or GKE or AKS, uh, they've got directions for those. They've also got self-managed public cloud options here as well. Uh, but in this particular case, I'm actually going to do self-managed on-premises and uh, choose that option. And then we're just going to scroll down a little bit here and look for how to install Calico with the Kubernetes API data store of 50 nodes or less. And so they've got a really simple command to just download a YAML configuration file for Calico here. So we're going to download that. And then we are going to just run kubectl apply on that YAML file. And that should get Project Calico, the CNI, up and running inside of our environment. And you can kind of see what features we get here. We get network policy, IP address management, of course, the CNI itself, the overlay, routing capabilities, as well as the data store integration here. So let's run our curl command here. For starters, just copy that to my clipboard and download that file. And then we can explore it. So we'll just cat that file here. And this is a really, really large file, but it basically contains all of the necessary components in order for Calico to get up and running. You can see we have a deployment there. And we've also got, let's see what else, if we keep scrolling up, we've also got a um, rolling update strategy here for a daemon set. So we've got a daemon set that's running a Calico node right here. And we've also got a cluster role binding here and a bunch of other resources, but I won't bore you with all the details on that. And then let's go ahead and do a kubectl apply. So we'll just copy this command here. I could just type it out, but I'm just feeling lazy right now. And that's going to go ahead and apply the entire YAML file to our network here. And that should get Project Calico up and running. And if we come back and run kubectl get all on our Kube system namespace here, once Project Calico gets fully up and running, we should see Core DNS eventually start up here. So right now, Core DNS is just kind of crashing and restarting on its own. But once Calico is up and running and initialized here, you'll see that, sure enough, Core DNS is up and running. And it looks like Calico Node is up and running as well. And Calico Kube Controllers is still in the creation process. But in a few more seconds, you'll see that that comes up and running as well. So now we've got a fully functioning cluster here. We've got Core DNS running. We've also got Project Calico running as our container network interface. And so we could go ahead and run a test pod. So I'm going to use an Nginx test pod as an example just to make sure that we can spin something up. So for starters, I'm going to create a namespace. So I'll run kubectl, uh, let's say create namespace. And I'll give that a name. Let's call it something like Trevor. So now we've got a new namespace. So if I do kubectl get ns, 
you can see we've got this Trevor namespace. So let's go ahead and do a kube cuddle run and we'll take a look at the help for that. There's a whole bunch of options here, um, but we could do run uh, pod with the name nginx and then we use the image nginx off of the Docker hub and that should be a pretty good example. So I'll actually just copy that to my clipboard and then paste it in. And I also want to tack on the namespace option so that the pod gets run inside of our Trevor namespace. So we'll do that. And sure enough, it created that pod. So now we need to ver verify that it's actually running. So I'll do a kubectl get all for the namespace Trevor. And as you can see, that pod is pending. So I'm going to do a kubectl, let's say describe. We'll do describe pod in namespace Trevor. And so this gives us some more details on it. And as you can see, we get this message saying that zero of one nodes are available. And it actually tells us the specific reason that no nodes are available because the only node that we have in our cluster has something known as a taint. And that taint is basically specifying that the node is a master node. And so because this is a master node, the kube scheduler is refusing to schedule this pod that we've just run on this node. And so therefore it's just failing because there's no other nodes in the cluster that can satisfy this pod's needs. So what we can do if we switch back to our documentation here, they actually provide a command that we can use to untaint the node with that master annotation. So I'm just going to run this kubectl taint nodes command, and that will remove, you can see we've got a minus sign here at the end, that will remove the master taint from our node, and it'll allow the kube scheduler to schedule our pod to run on our one and only node in our cluster. All right, so now the KAS master01 node has been untainted. And if we come back up here and run our describe command, you can see that in a matter of seconds, the scheduler says, okay, I'm now going to schedule you to run on this node. And it pulls the image from Docker Hub, and then it starts the pod uh, with the container Nginx inside of it. So now if we do a kubectl get all on namespace Trevor, you can see that that pod is actually running. So our container network interface seems to be working just fine. You can see that our pod was able to get an IP address on our pod CIDR block here, which is 10.88/16, and we are good to go to continue working with our Kubernetes cluster. So that's how we can use Kube ADM to spin up a Kubernetes cluster on your own self-managed node. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.